So now that I've made an interaction diagram, I'm going to use that interaction diagram to help me make the second of the two visual tools that I use uh, to make what I call a free body diagram, or uh, we could also call it a force diagram. Um, I usually try to avoid saying force diagram because interaction diagram, force diagram sound so similar. Um, I just want my name to reflect that they're a little bit different. So I'm going to call this a free body diagram. If you want to know more about that particular word choice, you can ask me some other time. But a free body diagram makes use of the interaction diagram. Uh, the interaction diagram is great for showing what is interacting with what else and is always my first step. But the free body diagram is going to help us identify more clearly for the forces that are acting on that system. It's going to help us identify the amounts and the directions of those forces. And so a free body diagram is an essential tool of doing physics. Uh, and we can help ourselves make better free body diagrams when we make our interaction diagram first. Although interaction diagrams are going to have far reaching uh, help for us that go way beyond making free body diagrams. But for right now, let's focus on making the free body diagram uh, from my knowledge of the interaction diagram. And I've already done the hard work in the interaction diagram. So let's first take a look at the bowling ball at rest on the floor, and then we'll do another free body diagram for while the ball is being tapped to speed it up. Let's remember that just like with the interaction diagram, these free body diagrams are for at a particular moment in time. So like we could pause the video at some moment and we're thinking about what forces are happening right now. Let's remember that forces are interactions and so things either are interacting with each other in this moment or they aren't. And that's how we always need to be thinking about forces. So this is at a moment in time. We're not interested in the long history of the years that this bowling ball has been in existence. We're not focusing on what happened to the bowling ball 10 minutes ago. We're not focusing on what happened to the bowling ball 10 seconds ago. We're focused on what's happening to the bowling ball right now in this exact moment. So my free body diagram, I am going to treat because we are still thinking about uh, this bowling ball as long as we can get away with it. Uh, we're treating this bowling ball like a particle. The bowling ball doesn't have a size or a shape that we're concerned with. The parts of the bowling ball aren't really moving relative to each other. So I can think of the bowling ball as just a dot, just a particle. And so I'm going to begin my free body diagram uh, by just drawing this little particle dot. And I think it might help if I just sketch out some axes. Vertical axis, horizontal axis, with my dot right at the center. And now I want to think about what are the forces acting on this bowling ball. The bowling ball is the system, uh, the stuff that I'm interested in. I uh, already identified on my interaction diagram. And so now I'm just going to draw those individual forces acting on the bowling ball onto this free body diagram. Now we've already decided that there are two forces on the bowling ball. There's a gravitational force from the Earth and there's what we call a normal force from the floor. And let's remember from our reading that normal is not uh, like ordinary here. The word normal in this context is a mathematical term. It means perpendicular to that surface. So a normal force is a force uh, from a surface in contact with something else. The normal force is always perpendicular to that surface. So we've got two forces, gravitational force by the earth on the bowling ball, normal force by the floor on the bowling ball. And so I'm just going to draw each of those forces. So if I think about, I'll just pick one of the two. Uh, let's say the uh, gravitational force 
by the earth on the bowling ball, I think we've already agreed that that force is straight downward. So I'm drawing a downwards arrow to represent that gravitational force. And a larger amount of force, I'm going to draw a longer arrow. A smaller amount of force, I'm going to draw a smaller arrow, just like with our velocity arrows that we've drawn in the past. The length of the arrow relates to the amount of the measurement. So larger forces, um, bigger pushes or pulls are going to have longer arrows. And I'm going to label this arrow also. So the gravitational force from the Earth is straight down, and I'm going to label it. I'm always going to make my label, I'm going to make a big F for force, and I want to label three things like we saw in our reading. I want to label three things about this force. I want to label what kind of force it is. This is a gravitational force, so I'm just going to put a little subscript there. Gravitational force, comma, and I want to label by what noun, on what noun. Uh, we call the, the thing by uh, that's doing the force to the other thing, uh, we call the agent, the object is on the receiving end of that force. So I would say that force is by the earth on the bowling ball. Now, it's likely that you're thinking, wow, that's a lot of writing or one force. And sure, it is. But I think that in the big picture, it's really, really, really going to help us not misidentify things. It's going to help us be correct about drawing the right forces and leaving off the wrong forces. Uh, for example, if we're drawing a free body diagram of the bowling ball, we're looking at what forces are acting on the bowling ball. Yes, there are other forces on my interaction diagram, but this is going to help me focus on which ones actually matter. Um, because if it doesn't end in on bowling ball, then it doesn't belong on this diagram. So I've got a gravitational force by the Earth on the bowling ball straight down, and then I know that there have to be two arrows on here because we've already identified that there are two lines crossing the system boundary on that interaction diagram. So my other force, normal force by the floor on the bowling ball, the floor pushes up on the bowling ball, the floor pushes perpendicular to the surface of the floor, the floor pushes up on the bowling ball, and I think that this force should be the same length as the gravitational force. These two forces, if the bowling ball is just at rest on the floor, then these forces should be in balance. And I'm even going to show that, because I might not have drawn these perfectly, it looks like maybe my upwards arrow looks to me like a little bit shorter than the downwards arrow. But to show that I mean these are the same length, just like we did before, I'm just going to put that little mark on there to show, yes, these are meant to be the same amount. And so this arrow, I'm going to label it. This force is big F for force. This is a normal force by the floor on the bowling ball. And so uh, let's see, looking at these, uh, I know that these forces are uh, balanced. Um, something else that I feel confident in saying about this situation is thinking about, is the velocity of the ball changing or not changing um, while well, it's just sitting at rest on the floor? Um, the velocity... is not changing. But my free body diagram is complete, and I know that my free body diagram is complete as long as my interaction diagram is correct, because there were two lines crossing the system boundary on my interaction diagram means that there are two forces, and I have drawn them both. Now, I could, for the second free body diagram, let's recognize that a lot of this is the same, so I'm just going to repeat that 
Oops. Forgive me. So here is my free body diagram again. Uh, I still have that same normal force. The floor is pushing on the bowling ball just as much and in the same direction, whether I'm tapping the ball with the mallet or not. The gravitational force by the earth on the bowling ball is still there. Both of those are still on my interaction diagram. But the one difference now at this different moment in time from before is that the mallet is now hitting the bowling ball. And so I need to add one more arrow for the mallet on the bowling ball. And I've got one, two, three forces on uh, this interaction diagram. So I'm going to need three arrows on my free body diagram. So thinking about the mallet pushing the bowling ball, I was pushing the bowling ball with the mallet to the right. So I'm going to need to show that the mallet was pushing the bowling ball to the right. Now I drew that arrow a different length. I have no idea how much that push was compared with the normal or the gravitational forces on the bowling ball. I certainly didn't make any measurements about it. Um, so I am just showing an arrow of some unknown length. Um, I don't know an amount, but it's almost certainly different from the other ones. And so I just need a label on here. So this is a force. Uh, it's not a normal force exactly. Um, similar, but I'm not going to call it a normal force. Let's leave that for like surfaces. Uh, it's not a gravitational force for sure. I'm just going to label this as a push by the mallet on the bowling ball. And so now I know that this free body diagram is completed because I knew that there need to be three forces on my free body diagram because I had three lines cross the system boundary on the interaction diagram. And I've got all three of those forces shown on the free body diagram. But what's different about the free body diagram compared with the interaction diagram is that the free body diagram shows us amount and direction of each of those forces. Now, if our previous free body diagram showed forces that were in balance, these two forces, the normal and gravitational forces, those are still in balance with one another. But now there's a third force that's not balanced out. So maybe I could call this situation where the bowling ball is being hit by the mallet, maybe I could call this, uh, I could say that those forces are unbalanced. And this is a situation uh, where we know that the ball is speeding up. We've already had these conversations. So we know that in this situation, the velocity is changing. Anyhow, uh, this is how we draw a free body diagram. This is an essential tool of doing physics.